Throughout the 20th century, MLRS have been and remain the most widespread type of rocket technology used by ground forces in all kinds of wars and armed conflicts. The best MLRS to date are the American M270 and M142 HIMARS. What kind of animal is this, and why should it become a game changer for the Ukrainian army? We're going to cover that right now. Most of you have probably already seen what modern MLRS look like more than once. Perhaps against a background of these, the first kinds of volley fire platforms, invented back in the day by the Chinese Song Dynasty, seem at least somewhat strange today. But in the old days, there was considerable success in raining hundreds of fiery arrows that fell on the heads of these poor fellows who dared to besiege castles. One example of such systems, perfectly preserved as a museum exhibit, is the Hwacha MLRS, developed in Korea in the 15th century, the name of which literally means fire wagon. It's clear that in comparison with modern-day missile systems that can attack targets at 300 kilometers or more, a volley of arrows at a distance of 300 to 400 paces is just cause for a smirk. However, in reality, a shower of fiery arrows covering the sky is a very menacing sight, reminiscent of a mini-apocalypse. Having played enough with Mysore rockets and Congreve rockets created by the British inventor William Congreve, humanity gradually reached the Katyusha, T-34 Calliope, Stalin Organ, also known as the 8cm Rakuten Wielwaschwerfer, and many other crafts before realizing the importance of a massive transition to modularity. To date, there are two types of MLRs. Those with non-removable, often steel pipes with the option of manual or semi-automatic missile reloading, famous for being undemanding in regards to additional tools for maintenance, or modular MLRs, or those with containers that can be removed from the launcher, quickly replacing them with the same missiles or completely changing them to another type of ammunition. The latter gives commanders much more freedom in the field to solve a wide array of tactical situations using different types of missiles, require minimal reload time, and are easier to upgrade. The undisputed boss among all launchers in the world today, though, is the M270, an armored, self-propelled multiple launch rocket system developed by American specialists, together with colleagues from Great Britain, West Germany, France, and Italy. After a long debate in March 1974, the U.S. Army formed requirements for a new rocket launcher, giving it the name General Support Rocket System, or GSRS. Its main task was to combat enemy air defenses, counter battery fire, and neutralize enemy artillery. The new mount was to have a longer range and sufficient firepower to free up cannon units to support infantry and armored vehicles. As a result of U.S. consultations with NATO allies, who were trying to create a similar system on their own, a decision was made on close cooperation, and the name of the system, GSRS, was replaced by the one more familiar to all of us, MLRS. The actual development began in September 1977 by Boeing and Vaught Aerospace, who won their competitive contracts worth $855,000 from three competitors. Each of the companies undertook to submit to U.S. Command three models for combat vehicles with unguided rockets for further testing at the White Sands Missile Range in New Mexico. Development continued until the 1980s and eventually became a top priority for the Field Artillery School, which considered the installation the most impressive new weapon system. The first production models were introduced in August of 1982, and the first operational M270 battery was formed in March 1983. A few years later, the systems entered, with other things into service with the ground forces of various armies around the world and the total number of M270s that left the assembly line by 2003 exceeded 1,300 units. In parallel with this, more than 700,000 missiles of various types were created for them. MLRS M270 self-propelled loading launcher consists of three main subsystems, M269 loading launcher module, loader launcher module LLM, the electronic fire control system installed inside it, and the M993 vehicle a derivative of the Bradley fighting vehicle chassis. The main tactic for the use of such systems was the principle of fire and forget. Since this was at the time of their creation, the main task was to avoid the vulnerability of friendly forces encountering Soviet counter-battery fire. One M270, firing 12 basic M26 missiles with a range of 32 kilometers, covers an area of 600 square meters with 7,728 projectiles. 
and the firepower of a single MLRS battery, producing a full salvo of 108 missiles, is equivalent to 33 cannon artillery divisions. The system can also fire containerized MGM-140 ATA CMS missiles. Each capsule contains six standard missiles or one ATA CMS guided missiles, since the two types of ammunitions cannot be mixed. The LLM holds two capsules at the same time, into which rockets are manually loaded using an integrated winch system. All 12 ATA CMS missiles can be launched in less than one minute, and one M270 firing 12 missiles completely covers one square kilometer. A typical missile salvo consists of three M270 vehicles, each firing 12 missiles containing 644 M77 grenades. The total release into the enemy area is equivalent to 23,184 grenades. Unfortunately, there were some downsides as well. With a 2% unexploded ordnance ratio, about 400 unexploded projectiles will remain in the area of impact, which can endanger not only friendly troops but also civilians. At the beginning of 2006, the MLRS underwent a global modernization for the use of guided missiles. The first phase of XM-31 missile testing was completed in a wild rush in March 2006, since there was a critical need for the use of a unitary guided projectile in combat operations in Iraq. In this regard, Lockheed Martin received a contract to convert existing M-30 DPICM GMLRS missiles into the unitary XM-31 variant. The use of the M1 GMLRS made the M270 a point-fire artillery system for the first time. With GPS guidance and a single 200-pound high-explosive warhead, these missiles hit their targets accurately with less chance of collateral damage. This opened, among other things, a lot of opportunities for the use of MLRS in urban environments. At the same time, the number of launched missiles also decreased significantly, reducing the logistical load. The M31 was equipped with a dual-mode fuse with pinpoint and delayed detonation options for hitting soft targets and lightly fortified bunkers. The improved version of the projectile, the M31A1, has already received a multi-mode fuse with the possibility of a non-contact air explosion to neutralize enemy personnel. Its height can be adjusted to 9.8 feet or 32.8 feet, and the range of the GMLRS ranges from a minimum of 9.3 miles to 43 miles at Mach 2.5. Over its long years of service, the M270 has been taught to work with two extensive families of ammunition, MFOM, or MLRS family of munits, among which are the M26 and its improved versions, M26A1 and M26A2, unguided rockets with a cluster warhead and a firing range of up to 28 miles, the GMLRS M30, which is a 240mm cluster warhead guided missile with a range of over 43 miles, the M28 and M28A1, 227mm reduced range practice rockets. AT2, 227mm cluster rockets for laying mines, and many other modifications of the above ammunition with different ranges. And AFOM, Army TACMS family of munitions, including ATCMS Block 1, tactical missiles with a cluster warhead containing 950 M74 rounds and a firing range of up to 102.5 miles. ATA CMS Block 1A, an improved modification of the Block 1A missile with an American Navstar GPS receiver, 275 M74 submunitions and a firing range of up to 186 miles. ATA CMS Block 1A Unitary, Tactical missiles with 500-pound HE warhead, inertial guidance system, GPS receiver, and a range of 167.8 miles. ATA CMS Block 2 and 2A. Tactical missiles with cluster warheads for 13 or 6 aiming bat submunitions and a range of up to 87 and 137 miles, respectively. No less impressive is the list of MLRS modifications. To date, there are 9 of them in total. In order to not having to delve into these versions that turned out to be more of an intermediate link or were created for the needs of specific allied states, like the M27 OB1 for Britain with reinforced armor to protect the crew, we'll focus on more global ones. M27 OAO, the basic version in 1983. M270A1, MLRS version with an improved IFCS, improved fire control system, and an improved ILMS, improved launcher mechanical system, due to which the guidance time was reduced by 85% and the MLRS reload time by 40%.
Additionally, a self-diagnostic function that can detect malfunctions in a timely manner has come to be a very important innovation. M270C1, modification with the new UFCS or Universal Fire Control System, developed for HIMARS to replace IFCS. M270D1 received a new computer, positioning devices, GPS antennas, launch control unit, informative displays, and remote control devices. The most recent was the modernization that started just this year, the M270A2 version, which switched to the Common Fire Control System, or CFCS, the same for both the M142 and the M270. It features a new engine, transmission, launcher module, and improved IAC, or improved armor cab, capable of protecting the crew not only from small arms, but also from mine explosions. Recently, the Pentagon recognized the 1980s ATACMS developments as obsolete and announced the creation of a new LRPF OTRK, the heart of which will be the Precision Strike Missile, or PRSM, which can also be launched from the fleet of existing American MLRS. In terms of pricing, MLRS has also undergone significant changes. The cost of the basic version of the launcher cost $418,998, but its modern incarnation, the M270A2, will run you $966,589. But even the mighty M270 of the U.S. Army wasn't enough. Along with these in the late 1990s, the United States acquired yet another MLRS, M142HIMARS. This is a light-wheeled version of the Big Brother, the M270, with one capsule containing six missiles or one MGM-140 ATACMS missile instead of two, as is the case with the M270. All this awesomeness was installed on the frame of a standard Army 5-ton M1140 truck from the FMTV family and can feed enemies with all types of the previously mentioned AFOM and MFOM family projectiles. As for combat experience, the M270's first battle, Hardening, took place during the Persian Gulf War, when in support of Operation Desert Shield in 1990, 6th Battalion from the 27th Field Artillery Regiment was deployed to Saudi Arabia and played a decisive role in its early defense. A little later, during Operation Desert Storm, this battalion came the first U.S. field artillery unit to open fire on Iraq, providing timely and accurate rocket fire in the theater of operations. During the Desert Storm, 89 M270s were involved. Their first task was to launch eight ATACMS missiles at Iraqi air defense systems on January 18, 1991. And by February of that same year, the 4th Battalion of the 27th Field Artillery Regiment staged the largest MLRS night fire in history, firing 312 missiles in one sortie. By the end of February that year, another 414 missiles were fired to support ground operations. In total, out of 57,000 artillery rounds fired by the end of this year, 6,000 were MLRS rockets and another 32 were ATACMS. Since then, the M270 has been used in many combat operations, including the evasion of Iraq in 2003. The first use of the GMLRS occurred in 2005 in Iraq, when two rockets were fired at Tal Afar at a distance of more than 30 miles and successfully hit insurgent strongholds, killing 48 terrorists. In 2011, the first upgraded MLRS-2 and M31 GMLRS rockets were handed over to the German Army Artillery School in Idar Oberstein for use by fighters at ranges of up to 56 miles. The history of the application of the younger HIMARS is no less extensive. In October 2010, they assisted in the NATO offense in Kandahar, hitting the hideouts of Taliban commanders, forcing them to flee to Pakistan. A little later, in November of 2015, the U.S. Army deployed HIMARS in Iraq, firing at least 400 missiles at the Islamic State since the beginning of the summer, and in March 2016, the military fired HIMARS missiles into Syria for the first time in support of Syrian rebels fighting ISIS. Since then, M142s have been regularly moved, and after being based in Jordan in the same 2016, the United States deployed them again near the Turkish-Syrian border, subsequently firing at ISIS once again. HIMARS also took a direct part in the battle for Mosul, and just two years later, as a result of effective missile strikes, these MLRS managed to destroy 50 Taliban militants and leaders in Musa Kala in Afghanistan. Three of the launched missiles hit their building within 14 seconds, 
And last, but certainly not the least of them, the M142 brought defeat to ISIS in eastern Syria as part of the Dare Azur campaign. At that point, the U.S. military was striking ISIS positions from HIMARS alone with up to 30 missile strikes per day. But the main event, and finest hour for MLRS over the past decade, has been the resistance put up against the invasion of the Russian occupation forces into the territory of Ukraine. Despite multiple concerns about the transfer of American MLRS to the Ukrainian army, the voice of the people still turned out to be louder than the attempts of even the largest EU countries, France and Germany, who tried to dissuade the United States from transferring heavy weapons to Ukraine. The last remaining weeks leading up to the announcement of the final decision regarding the MLRS were difficult for the Ukrainian people. Despite the previously signed Lend-Lease, many European politicians continued to play along with the Kremlin, trying to bring Kiev to territorial concessions. But the country is lucky that not only the truth is on its side, but also strong allies, such as the US and Great Britain. Since shortly after Joe Biden's decision to transfer a sample batch of four M142 HIMARS as part of a $700 million aid package, British Defense Secretary Ben Wallace confirmed the transfer of the M270 MLRS to that country, capable of hitting targets at a distance of up to 50 miles, stating that today, the whole world is on Ukraine's side. Highly effective MLRS will certainly assist our Ukrainian friends in protecting themselves from the Russian invaders, who level entire cities with impunity and terrorize civilians with long-range artillery. Today, the fighters of the armed forces of Ukraine are already being trained in the use of American MLRS, and before long they will introduce these new toys to the enemy. So what do you think? Will the American MLRS be powerful enough to rid the world of bloodthirsty Russian dictator and his ilk? Share your guesses in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so you never miss out on more videos just like today's. Thank you, and we'll see you in the next one.